All right, so uh, we're pretty much the halfway point of the course. We're less, we're at lesson five, and um, this chapter marks the beginning of the samurai period. Okay, so medieval Japan, the Middle Ages of Japan, and um, I don't like the way this textbook organizes the material because it's a lot of it's basically two very important periods packed into one lesson. Okay, so I don't like the way that the textbook deals with this um, chapter. So for this unit, you know. You might want to, you know, of course, read the textbook, but at the same time, I want you to be mindful that the textbook makes this information, this period, a lot more dry than it should be. It's actually a very interesting period because a lot of things happen, and you'll see why as we move on with um, the lecture. But we left off at the end of the Heian period, so in 1185. If you might remember from the last unit, the Taira clan was completely defeated by the Minamoto clan, their rivals, at the Battle of Dannoura, right? So what's happening now? What happens now that the Minamoto clan has come to power and has completely defeated the villainous Taira um, family? Keep in mind that the Minamoto family is led by two brothers. We have Yoritomo, who's the older son, he's the heir, he's the one who's in charge of all the political matters, the military planning, the strategy, um, dealing with the aristocrats, dealing with the imperial family. And his younger brother, Yoshitsune, was the general. He's the one who went out there, went out to the battlefield, and took care of his brother's uh, goals and, and put everything into fruition. But the two brothers decide to launch a new government, a new system of government, and their image, their dream for a new Japan is basically a Japan that's going to be focused on military culture, a military regime, a military government governed by the samurai, governed by the warrior class. So what happens to the aristocrats? Of course nothing. The emperor is a god, he's a divine kami. He cannot be touched. The imperial family cannot be touched. So they're going to continue to rule in Kyoto, of course, without any power. They basically become a symbolic um, regime, a symbolic government. And the aristocratic families, like the Fujiwara, like the other aristocratic families in Kyoto, they're going to still be very, very rich. They're going to have their waka and sake parties and, and immerse themselves in aristocratic culture. But any power and influence that they used to have during the Heian period is no more. They become figureheads, and though there's still an emperor ruling over Japan, who is a god, he does not have any political power. So everything seems good for a couple of years, and um, there's a lot of tension that starts to develop between the two brothers. Uh, Yoritomo doesn't live in Kyoto, okay? Yoritomo hates Kyoto, he hates the aristocrats, so he spends most of his time in Kamakura. Remember that when Taira no Kiyomori first exiled Minamoto no Yoritomo after the uh, Heiji Rebellion, uh, Yoritomo was sent to Kamakura, which is far away from Kyoto, it's near present-day Tokyo, okay? So, he, you know, it was far away, and remember Yoritomo was adopted by the Hojo family, who took him in, Yoritomo married the daughter of the Hojo family, Masako, we'll talk about her a little later. Um, so, you know, Kamakura becomes the base of the Minamoto family. So Yoritomo stays behind in Kamakura. He spends the first few years of this new government planning what the new government will be like. He doesn't want to go to Kyoto. Instead, he sends his brother, Yoshitsune, to Kyoto. He says, we have to deal with the aristocrats somehow. Go to Kyoto, you handle it for me. Okay? When Yoshitsune is in Kyoto, he has to deal, of course, with the imperial family. And remember, the new emperor was still a child, Gotoba. Okay? Gotoba was a kid. So, you know, he doesn't have any political power. Everything is going to be determined by his grandfather, good old retired Emperor Goshirakawa, who you might remember from before. Um, and Goshirakawa, even though he's very, very old at this point, he's still a master political manipulator. Okay? And his goal is to get power back in the hands of the imperial family. Even though they just spent time fighting, um, the Taira and the Minamoto spent time fighting to develop a new government for the Minamoto, uh, Goshirakawa still thinks that he can get the imperial family back in control. So, just like he used to do with back in the day with between Taira no Kiyomori and Minamoto no Yoshitomo, uh, Goshirakawa begins to play put two brothers against each other. Okay, he starts playing political games to get Yoshitsune and Yoritomo to fight, and he succeeds. Some things he would do, for example, Goshirakawa gives uh, Yoshitsune a court title. Okay, and Yoshitsune says. 
you know, I have to ask my brother first in Kamakura, I, you know, I need his permission. He is the head of the clan. I need his permission before I accept this title from you. And Goshirakawa says, I'm the, em you know, I'm the retired emperor. You, you don't have to ask your brother. Why do you have to ask your brother for everything? So he stirs the pot and, you know, Yoshitsune accepts this court title from the retired emperor. And his older brother, Yoritomo, is furious. He says, you know, we're trying to create a new warrior regime. Why are you going and, you know, accepting court titles without my permission? Okay. And things like, you know, little things like this happen. Okay, Goshirakawa will stir the pot between the brothers. You know, he'll say, oh, your brother said this, oh, your brother said that. And then the two brothers basically start fighting. And eventually things get so bad that um, Yoritomo accuses his younger brother, Yoshitsune, of treason and believes that he's trying to overthrow the new government. And this wasn't true. In, in reality, Yoshitsune was very loyal to his brother. He had no desire to overthrow the regime. He, you know, Yoshitsune even writes a letter uh, to his brother and says, you know, I, we, we, we didn't grow up together. We, we got to know each other later in life because of family circumstances, but I love you. I pledge loyalty to you. And, you know, unfortunately, Yoritomo had people in his ear also, the Hojo family. Yoritomo's wife did not like Yoshitsune. And so, you know, she was in his ear. Goshirakawa was in Yoshitsune's ear. And eventually... Um, Yoritomo declares war on his brother and, you know, he sends a force to Kyoto and Yoshitsune escapes to northern Japan, far away from everything, to the city of Hiraizumi. Um, and in 1189, Yoritomo's Minamoto forces, and, you know, he was also aided by his wife's family's army, the Hojo family's army. They corner Yoshitsune in a small shed and he and his small army are defeated and Yoshitsune commits ritual suicide, which we call seppuku. Or you might have heard the term harakiri, which is ritual suicide, where if you've lost a battle before being captured by your enemy, in order to preserve your honor, you must kill yourself by slitting your stomach open. Um, and this is a way to, you know, retrieve your honor after being defeated in battle. So Yoshitsune does this, and um, he and his army are defeated. So Yoritomo was now the unchallenged leader of Japan, okay, after defeating his brother. And then three, year, three years later, in 1192, Yoritomo officially commences his new government. And this is called a shogunate, which is a military dictatorship led by the shogun. Okay, And a shogun is essentially a military dictator. The shogun is the ultimate samurai. He is at the top of the samurai class. He is the leader of the samurai, and he is called a shogun. Okay? And a government led by a shogun is called a shogunate. So Yoritomo begins the first shogunate in 1192. And so Minamoto no Yoritomo becomes the first shogun of this, we call it the Kamakura shogunate. It's called the Kamakura shogunate because it was headquartered in the city of Kamakura, which as you know is Yoritomo's base. And actually, Yoritomo received this title of shogun from the retired emperor Goshirakawa, who had no choice but to give Yoritomo the title. After all, Yoritomo is now the ultimate leader of Japan. And actually, Goshirakawa dies in 1192. I don't want to say this, it's a little mean, but finally, after causing so much drama and death and destruction due to his political maneuvering, he's no more, okay? And so now the Kamakura Shogun is really uh, in charge of the country, although we do have an emperor who is a figurehead still, okay? And this begins the Kamakura period. We call this the Kamakura period. Um, lasted from 1185 to 1333. So in a shogunate system of government, the supreme leader of all warriors, all samurai, is the shogun. Okay, And so all samurai in Japan, no matter where you were, your supreme leader was the shogun, so you report to him. You are his vassal, you are his assistant, you are, his, you are under the shogun. Okay? So Yoritomo demands nothing but complete loyalty from his vassals, and this is really the cornerstone of samurai code. If you're a samurai... The number one thing you need to concern yourself is, in order to be honored, to maintain your honor, is to basically give lo your entire loyalty to die for your lord, in this case, the shogun. Okay, So loyalty is really important between shogun and vassal, between lord and vassal. So during this time, the official capital of Japan, which is basically wherever the emperor lives, is the capital city. And the emperor and the aristocrats are in Kyoto. So Kyoto is the official capital city of Japan. But the reason we call this the Kamakura period and the reason we call this the Kamakura shogunate is because Shogun Yoritomo made the city of Kamakura, which was his base, it's where his wife's family, the Hojo family, were from, 
the city of Kamakura becomes the base, the political headquarters of the new shogunate. So Kamakura was never the capital of Japan. It is, however, the political center of the country. We kind of have this in the U.S. Our capital city is Washington, D.C., right? But, you know, the business economic center where a lot of power and economic strength is, is, is uh, situated is New York City, right? And, and, and a great degree of political power as well. Yes, the head, political headquarters of the country is in Washington, D.C., but New York City is kind of where everything is going on, right? Similar idea. Kyoto is the capital, but Kamakura is where political, economic, and uh, centralized power is located. So, you know, it, it, it's not the capital city, but it is the headquarters of the new shogun. And why do you think uh, Yoritomo chose Kamakura? Well, Yoritomo made Kamakura his base because he wanted to be as far away from the imperial court and aristocrats as possible. Okay, if you look at the map, Kamakura is near present-day Tokyo, which didn't exist at that time, but it's far away from Kyoto. So Kyo uh, Yoritomo learned from the mistakes of the Taira family who moved to Kyoto and became too involved with the aristocrats. Yoritomo's goal from day one was, I don't want to be like the Taira. I want to make my base as far away from Kyoto as possible. Kamakura is perfect. It's isolated. I can do what I want. I don't have to have the aristocrats breathing down my neck all the time. And so it was very, a very good deal because, you know, he could do get his work done without having to deal with the aristocrats. He didn't want to get involved with them. And Yoritomo's number one goal was to establish better control of the provinces. This is something his late father, Yoshitomo, had wanted as well, to in, in, improve the quality of life in the provinces. So right away, uh, Shogun Yoritomo gets to work, and he begins to initiate several reforms. He would send his vassals, people who reported to him, to every single province, and they would govern these provinces directly. Okay? So essentially, distant provinces in Kyushu and Shikoku, which are far away from both Kyoto and Kamakura, which kind of really were, had, were doing their own thing during the Heian period, now Yoritomo sends his most trusted advisors and vassals to these faraway provinces to directly place them under the shogun's control. So now the shogun knows exactly what's going on in every single province. And he creates two new positions. Uh, the first one is called land stewards or jito. Okay? And land stewards are sent to every single province and they're responsible for the collection of rent and taxes. So they're basically tax collectors. All land was taxable and money was to go to the Kamakura shogunate. Okay? And the second position he creates are constables or shugo. This is basically a police force and they're responsible for keeping the peace in every single province. Okay? And, and they also establish a judicial system of laws, magistrates offices in every province. So now the provinces far away from Kyoto and Kamakura which kind of were doing their own thing for centuries, are now brought directly under the control of the shogun. In other words, the shogun is directly ruling every single province through his advisors, through his trusted people. Uh, Yoritomo's rule doesn't last long. Uh, he dies in 1199. He actually had an accident. He fell off a horse. And rumor has it that uh, the horse was startled by Yoshitsune's ghost. So apparently... You know, Yoshitsune's ghost appeared to Yoritomo, and this horse was startled. Yoritomo fell off and died. We don't know if that's true, but he did die from a horse accident. And uh, Yoritomo had two sons, and uh, they both succeeded him as shogun. Unfortunately, Yoritomo's sons did not have the intellect or mental capacity of their father. They were very, very unpopular in Kamakura. Uh, the first son died of a young age of illness, and then, you know, he didn't have any kids, so the second son, his brother, was assassinated in 1219 because he was so unpopular. Um, so, you know, none of these children of Yoritomo had any heirs, and so the Minamoto line basically dies out. After the second son of Yoritomo was assassinated in 1219, there's no more Minamoto family members. Everyone is gone. If Yoritomo had been smart and not killed his brother and his family, because Yoshitsune also had kids, but they were put to death, um, you know, Yoshitsune's family line could have succeeded, but they were all gone. The Minamoto family had been killed off by the Taira, by Yoritomo, right? So, you know, also, uh, so there's no one to continue the shoguns. Who's, shogun is a hereditary position, okay? So you need to have a shogun to, to rule, but there's no one left. So what's going to happen? Who will be shogun now? <laughs> 